All right, everyone, welcome to some coffee talk, <laughs> positively balanced conversations. So I am here with Jessica Wilkerson, and we are going to be talking about the fun subject of poop and hemorrhoids. Um, <laughs> Jessica, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, so I'm Jessica Wilkerson. I am a stay-at-home mama and mama to one so far, little baby Drax. I've been married to my husband for almost three years now. This July will be three years. This is 2020. So <laughs> um, I love all things health and wellness. Um, I'm, I just love everything about it. Nutrition, exercise, breathing, wellness, uh, supplements, everything as a whole. That is me. So. I love it. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Cassandra McCoy. I am your women's health athletic trainer and the founder of Positively Balanced in the Midwest Getaway. I am so excited to have you guys here. This is going to be a fun subject um, because some of us mamas experience hormones, or hemorrhoids, excuse me. We all experience the hormones. Um, <laughs> but the it's an interesting conversation because a poop whenever you're talking about poop postpartum that's a huge topic um it can be kind of a scary topic and then hemorrhoids um some people get them some people don't so it really makes an impact on those who do and those of us who might not have had them yet or um have just heard of them uh we're thinking oh what's the big deal so um jessica let's go and start with poop because you know that's the first thing uh we're to discuss mommy poop first so we're not talking about baby poop yet um but let's just talk about um i know with that first bowel movement right postpartum it has a lot of fear associated with it um especially if you've had any tears or injury down on your perineum or anywhere on the pelvic floor and it can be one of those daunting things that we have to do um, to survive and if for those of us who have it in a hospital you have to have a bowel movement to sometimes leave the hospital yeah, that wouldn't have happened for me i wouldn't have been able to leave the hospital <laughs> yeah no you're exactly right and um i don't know about you but after i left the hospital because i had a hospital birth with my first she um my nurse was like okay so here are your laxatives don't forget to eat always drink water um and okay you're on your way have you know have a great time let us know if anything's going on man that first poop i was terrified <laughs> i think i was more intimidated by it rather than terrified because i didn't know how bad things actually were <laughs> me um, I did not give birth in a hospital for my first. I did give birth at a birth center. Um, and so I really wasn't fully warned, <laughs> which is okay for me because I think the fact that I wasn't fully informed with how bad things were made it a little bit less frightening for me for the first bowel movement. No, that's a good thing because um, I think that is a part of my problem is because I work with women all the time who are postpartum and so I hear the stories so maybe that was influencing my bias who knows um, but I know some women you know maybe they're at the end of their pregnancy they're thinking about you know, maybe they're not even thinking about postpartum yet or they're just newly postpartum I wanted to talk about some different things that maybe could help with that first bowel movement um, so Jessica, what is your go-to thing that helped you um, a couple days postpartum? Oh gosh, um, I think just eating a clean diet. I really wasn't terribly hungry after I had baby, um, but just keeping up with the fiber and keeping up with the good foods and eating a lot of vegetables and being mindful of not just snacking on crackers all the time or something like that helped me a lot because I'm pretty regular already. I was not through pregnancy. I, I battled constipation quite a bit through pregnancy, but then afterwards, towards the end of the pregnancy and as baby dropped and things started to move downwards, things got better. And so just keeping up with that good diet and eating a lot of fiber, apples and things helped me. 
No, that's a good point because we have to have that fiber in order to safely carry that food and carry that um, bowel movement down and out. I was actually the opposite. So um, I have never been very regular. Um, so whenever, it looks like Kelly's joining the party, guys. Um, so whenever I was not very regular, I just had my, um, I was pregnant. I still was not very regular. And whenever, especially that first, you know, bowel movement, Kelly, we're talking poop and hemorrhoids. Well, oh, yay! <laughs> uh, but whenever I, you know, I was not regular, and then you add on the pregnancy or postpartum aspect, I had to focus on the hydration. Um, I was drinking water like crazy. And then also, not so much in pregnancy, but definitely postpartum, I started elevating my feet to where the bowel movement was a little bit more accessible. And oh, not this way, but like, <laughs> yeah. okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> so what I would do, would I would, I would ele elevate my feet. Some people, they use toilet paper rolls. Some people, they use little steps. Um, I used a foam roller because that's what I had in my house. And I just propped my feet right up. And um, it's the basically the goal is to get your knees above your hips. Mm -hmm. So it positions the sacrum and the tailbone a little bit out of the way so that it's more of a straight shoot. So it prevents, you know, the straining and things of that nature. Uh, so that was my go-to because I was not regular and I was so worried about that first one. So Kelly, I asked Jessica, I'll ask you, what was your go-to postpartum um, for helping you poop, especially that first one? Was there any struggle? I don't know. I don't feel like I did anything special. I just, I drank water and stayed hydrated. I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't have any problems. That's good. I know um, from my my work stuff since then about eating like soft foods and easily digestible things and all of that emphasis that a lot of traditional things have on the soft food and easily digestible and like returning slowly to a regular um, diet instead of just like jumping right back in with the lasagna. Mm -hmm. um, I've looked into that and I'm really interested in postpartum diets right now. No, that's a good point. Jessica mentioned, you know, she was heavy on the fiber, like just making sure that her mm -hmm. take was right. And you guys are exactly right. Um, another thing to consider is fermented foods and just helping mm -hmm. people that something that is uh, already almost pre digestible and mm -hmm. um, just the impact that that could make on the mom's gut, which of course affects their mental health. And then also the benefit of improved pooping. Um, never complained about that, right? Um, before we go into hemorrhoids, there's one other tip that I'd like to give people is I always have new mamas uh, get on magnesium, specifically like a, mm -hmm. that Calm. Um, it's C-A-L-M. Um, Calm is a, usually it's a little bit flavored. It's like raspberry lemonade or something like that. And it kind of fizzles whenever you put it in water. And it's just a drink that you can take before you go to bed. Now, mind you, you have to find the right dose for you, just because it can kind of give you the runs if you do a lot. <laughs> but um, it does help to soothe you and kind of calm you down once baby goes down. That way you can sleep. Um, it turns on that parasympathetic nervous system, but it also helps you kind of soften your bowels to where that first or few um, bowel, moves, bowel movements are a little bit more comfortable. So that's one that I always like to mention. Alrighty, so now the fun one, um, hemorrhoids. <laughs> so we've talked about poop, now let's talk about hemorrhoids. So I did not have hemorrhoids with baby Ethan um, at the time of this viewing. Uh, I'm pregnant, so at <laughs> later date, I mean, who knows, I might have hemorrhoids with baby number two. But just <laughs> Kelly, tell me, did you guys have hemorrhoids? So Jessica did, so. He didn't either, okay. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> okay. So Jessica, tell us more. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay, um, oh my gosh. So this is my first experience with them ever in my life. And of course my, my wonderful husband told me about his experience with them while he was in Iraq um, and how 
you know, all that came to be. And I won't go into those details for his sake. <laughs> um, but so I, I kind of knew like what I was experiencing, what I was dealing with as far as like having it explained to me. But I, <sighs> Drax's head was so big and him being my first and with how quick he came, um, cause I was only in labor for 10 and a half hours. So, so like but the time my water broke for the time he was here, it was about 10 and a half hours. And so pushing, I pushed, I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I thought I was going slow and my midwife kept coaching me, go slow, low and slow. Um, and I thought I was going slow, but at the end it was just fast and furious and I couldn't help it. It was, I think it was like that fetal rejection kind of taking over and, mm-hmm. um, and and my biggest fear was I kept I was on all fours in the tub and I was like I don't want to poop (laughs) and she goes don't worry about it just focus on getting the baby here and so just slow and slow pushing like I was supposed to and then I had I had also heard that the goal is to poop and I'm like okay well that makes sense because it kind of puts you in the right mind frame to push well in doing so pushing so hard, I ended up with lovely hemorrhoids. And then because I was kind of forced back into work two weeks postpartum, my hemorrhoids stuck around for a long time. I think I was dealing with them all the way up until 10 weeks postpartum. So not huge ones. I mean, they were pretty significant when I was two, three, four weeks postpartum. They had kind of subsided a little bit by five weeks, um, but I still dealt with just the tenderness, the uncomfortableness, just tiny little exposed um, nodes, I guess you could call them. Cassandra probably has the scientific term, but um, I, I dealt with that for a long time. And the tux pads did help. That is the only thing that did help. Um, pe- preparation H or the hemorrhoid cream didn't do, touch a thing. And uh, my midwife was also like, well, if, if they really don't go away and none of this is helping, she goes, I have a trick. And she advised me to grate potatoes and pack potatoes against them, like just a regular white Idaho potato. I never had to go that far, but um, she said there's something in the potato that just helps them go back up in. I'm trying to think of what component that would be, but it does make sense because if you think about sometimes, you know, you use things like onions with uh, detox on the foot or things of that nature. Um, I'm not surprised. That's interesting. So just to define, um, it, the hemorrhoid, and I should have done that, that at the beginning. I apologize, everyone. But hemorrhoids are swollen and inflamed veins in your rectum. So your rectum is where, you know, your bowel movement comes out. And so with Jessica's story, she talked about how she had to push a lot and very fast. And basically think of it kind of like whenever you hold your breath and you're kind of doing a valsalva where you kind of hold your breath and push. Um, think of it kind of like that pressure that gets built up, which is again why I talk about breathing and pressure so much. Basically, you burst some blood vessels almost. Like if you want to think of it that way, but instead of just completely bursting them, you inflame the heck out of them. <laughs> and so those veins actually get very um, just swollen and it's usually around the opening a lot of times. And so some people, did you experience bleeding or anything like that? Just a very small amount. Okay. And so sometimes there are bleeding. Uh, There is bleeding, excuse me. So it's, you know, it's common with pregnancy, postpartum, maybe with significant bowel movements or obesity, but definitely for women postpartum. And it's not like we needed to add something else to the list of things that we experience postpartum, right? Right. Alrighty, so any other thoughts on poops and hemorrhoids before we end this chat, ladies? I said don't be afraid. Like it, it was bad and it did hurt, but I think doing all those things, especially elevating your feet, I've just been in a habit of doing that as well. That helps a lot. Kelly, anything from your postpartum Adula experience that you would like to share? Not specifically. I think it was pretty well covered in all the tips. And I mean, just personally, like I said, I didn't have, um, I didn't have any problems even like I've had two babies and neither time have I had like that first poop problem or anything. I guess I was well hydrated. I don't know, but I don't know. And I just, I, I don't know. 
Well, that's good. That's a good thing to have. I love yeah, that you did your homework beforehand and you were able to prepare correctly. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining us uh, for this incredible and thrilling talk of poop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Cassandra McCoy. I'll be signing off for us today. And everybody have a safe and wonderful day. Bye.